Hey, how y'all doing? Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Babylon Exporter in through in uh, Blender. Uh, we're going to be specifically looking at how you can do animations, how you create animations, and how you get them to work. Okay, and it's going to require us to fiddle with some of the files that come out of the exporter and get get everything to look right. But we'll, at the same time, we'll also take a look at the JSON file itself and the file structure of it, so we can get a better idea of what the actual workflow entails of going from Babylon to uh, from Blender to Babylon. All right, so let me just get you started by showing what we're going to be doing. Uh, what we're going to be doing is creating an animation, okay? And I've already created one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up right here. So this is the sand, sandbox um, available uh, at Babylon.js. Uh, now, one of the unfortunate parts about it is you can throw your animation in here. However, you're not going to be able to access all of the methods and stuff that are also available. So you can only kind of look at the J at the JSON file. So I'm going to throw in the animation I've already gone ahead and created, and we'll get to take a look at that real quick. All right, so what you can see right here is we have our Suzanne head, and it's moving, and it's also uh, got a little bit of an animation on it. All right, so let's take a look at our Blender file. Okay, and right now you can't really see anything, so let's just get in perspective. And if you remember, this was the one that we worked with a lot earlier. Let me turn on um, screencast just in case you want to see what I'm hitting. All right, so we have our file right here. It's already got a little bit of an animation on it. Unfortunately, right now, Babylon does not support morph targets, so we're not going to be able to see this kind of this winking and all that stuff that's going on right there. Uh, however, we can do some other stuff. Uh, if you do want to do this kind of work, you have to do it as an armature. Uh, you have to do some skinning and skeletal work in order to get this to work right. Okay, but let's add a little bit of an action to our camera right now. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is set up a camera constraint. And you do so by just coming over to the uh, constraints button up here, add object constraint, track two, and we're going to track to the Suzanne head. Okay, so that moves it in the correct direction. It's not quite pointing where we need it to do go, so let's just make some adjustments onto that. And hopefully it points. Yep, now it looks like it's going to be pointing correctly. Perfect. Okay, so next thing we got to do is add a keyframe. It's our location rotation. And then we'll go ahead and just move this. Okay, and we will move along here. Whoops, I reset that. That's okay, though. So we'll do that. Grab that piece again. And then insert another keyframe, location rotation. And why don't we go above and get another view. We'll just zoom right over here. And why don't we get in close up. Okay, insert another keyframe. And let's see how that looks. That's nice. Okay, so we'll insert another keyframe, location rotation. All right, and we'll chill out there for a second. Actually, let's move it. Why don't we track back over? What's going over here? Insert another keyframe, location rotation, and then see how that goes. Maybe we'll maybe we'll move this over some more over here, and maybe we'll move it up a little bit. So we'll grab it on the C. Insert another keyframe, location rotation. Okay, and then we'll do let's move it over a little bit more, and we'll just pan over here. One more, and then our initial value, we'll just copy that right in there. Okay, so in fact, we can just copy that, go to the end, paste that value in. All right. And have it not take. Try it again. There we go. back to the beginning, copy this value, go to the end, and then we'll insert our last keyframe for location rotation. Okay, so then that gives us a nice little animation for everything. All right, so we have our movement. Okay, it's not perfect, but it gets the idea across. Now, the first thing that we need to do in order to get this to work is that 
everything in Babylon is handled by keyframes, which means that if we want to create this animation, what we have to do is actually bake the animation. Okay, so simple enough. You just go to Object, Animation, Bake Animation. I'm going to turn all this stuff on. I don't need Visual Key on. All right, there we go. Baked our first animation. Now let's bake the next one. Let's bake the camera animation or bake the Suzanne animation. Okay. So now we'll just go ahead and go to object, animation, bake animation. Okay. All right. Now if we hit play on this, we are not seeing anything. What's going on here? I probably have to remove this uh, tracking. Um, okay, so just need to remove the, when it did that, it, uh, re changed, it reset my rotation, removed my rotation on my objects, so, uh, we'll have to reset that track too. On the camera. All right, now let's take a look at that. There we go. Okay. All right, perfect. So we have that working now. So let's go ahead and export this animation. Babylon. And we'll just call this my animation. So we'll go to our Babylon folder. And we'll export it as the Babylon. All right, no errors, good, good, good. Okay, so first thing you have to understand is that with an animation, um, we're gonna look at the documentation real quick on this. And what you're gonna see right here is that there's these, um, there, there's a couple options that we need to enable for this to work, okay? And that's the these values right here, okay? And we need to stick it in the in the correct location so on this one, which happens to be meshes, we need to stick these values right in between animations, the array, and we need to stick it also in between the array of instances, okay? So we need in between those two. And that's on meshes. And then on cameras, go, go to cameras, we need to stick it right after ellipsoid, okay? So I have already made that earlier animation, so I'm just going to copy the, those values that I made earlier, um, which is basically the uh, quantity, and the number of values, and we'll just copy this. Okay, and then we'll hop over to our animation. And then we need to stick that right after the ellipsoid, and we also need to stick that right after the array. Okay, so let's go find our proper location for that. And I know this is kind of a whole lot of gobbledygook, so just bear in mind that you kind of have to be patient looking through all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? We'll do it. We'll do the quick and dirty search. Ellipsoid. All right, that's perfect. All right, so one goes here. All right, and then the other one I said was after, that was after ellipsoid, and the other one I said was after, after animations. So we'll just go to animations. And always just double check to make sure that you're not doubling up on commas or anything silly like that. So we go to animations. All right, so here's our array. Let's look for the end of the array. which of course isn't showing up. Beautiful. So we have to figure out where it is. Uh, okay, so here's loop behavior. This looks like an end, end of the array, maybe. I have a sneaking feeling it's not gonna be in the right spot. Rotation animation, loop behavior. I already put it in this one, ellipsoid. Where's the other one? Oh, I, that, I, I searched the wrong location. That's why I couldn't find it. Okay, so there's indices. Indices, submesh animations. So it's right after that. Indices, 
we should see sub meshes and then animation. So we need the end of this array. Which of course is an array of an array of an array. So keys. 161, 170, 171. All right, this should go right here. All right, if everything works right, if I go ahead and hit refresh on this, it should work. Cross my fingers. Yep, look at that. All right, so there's a couple different things I've done to this scene. Actually, it looks like our head isn't moving, so let's figure out why that is. Should have an animation on the head. Hmm. Okay, so again, I put it in the wrong spot. You actually want it right here, and this is why you have to be so careful. So right after scaling and before instances, you need to put this right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save on that, and we'll come back over, refresh, and now you can see our animation is totally working the way it should. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind it. So now we can just kind of drag and drop this file. You will notice that I have a couple differences in this one versus the other scene, even though we're dropping in the same JSON. That's because I'm affecting the, the some of the properties in the scene. I'm putting in this flat shader, which is a new feature that, that was recently added to 3.js, or to Babylon. I had to look this act, this feature up because I hated the way that it was, uh, it was shading everything like so. So let me show you that real quick, okay? So in our scripts folder, You'll see I'm loading the scene up. I'm loading the full scene into here, okay? And then execute when ready. I'm adding a light to the scene, okay? And then in the scene.meshes at zero, that's an array of meshes that are in the scene. I'm doing a convert to flat shaded mesh uh, method onto the mesh itself. And what that's doing is adding the flat shader onto it as well as showing a bounding box around there. I've also added in some ground color and all that stuff. So this is the basic function on how to load a full scene. You can load individual objects. There's also an assets manager that enables you to manage your assets. So you can load things at different times. You can load things all sorts of different ways. Uh, as we get more into Babylon, we'll be taking a look at this. But this is just a high level overview of how you can do some basic, 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 basic uh, of, of path and manipulation for your camera and doing stuff. Just remember that you need individual keyframes for everything that you do when you're bringing an animation to, so you always have to bake an animation in Blender. Anyways, thank you again for turning, tuning in, and we'll be going over more Babylon stuff in the future and Blender as well. Thanks again, and don't forget to subscribe.